I'm back. You know, I'm not sure where I wanted to go first. I think I'm going to give you some news. I got cold. I put my sweater back on. You know, it was hot when we were worshiping. And then now it's again a little cool. So I put the sweater back on. I'm going to take it off again when I start preaching. Um, let's, I'm going to share some news with you first. And then I'm going to get what I want to talk to you about. Um, let's see. What, let me see what article I want. I, I haven't been to file these news articles here. So, um, there was a few that I wanted to, okay, let's talk about that, the, um, the super blood moon, all right, there is a, a super blood moon that is coming, let's see, let me, see, let me pull this up first, okay, one minute here, remember I told you earlier about that rabbi, the first super blood moon of the year sign of earthquakes and government will fall. We're, we're still going through that shutdown. Now, um, I don't get, get all into the news. You know, I tell you something so that you're aware of what's, what's going on. Um, I had an article here. Hold on a second. Let me see if I can pull it up real quick. Uh, Do you hear about what went on with the Democrats and with what Trump was trying to do with the border? Let me see if I can pull it up here. I had it here. Let me see if I can find it. Okay, here it is. Hold it. Trump offers immigration compromise and partial shutdown. Did you hear about that? Okay, he was supposed to have spoken yet last night. All right, I'm just going to read you a little bit of this. Let me see if I can. I hope it doesn't start talking. If it does, I have to stop it here. This is off of Fox News here. Says President Trump in a televised White House address Saturday offered Democrats a compromise package on immigration in an effort. Here it goes. It's gonna just a short <laughs> time ago. Okay, in an effort to end the nearly month-long partial government shutdown. Although some prominent Democrats were dismissing the olive branch as a non-starter before Trump even spoke. Trump announced that he was prepared to back a three-year extension of protections for 700,000 immigrants who came to the country illegally as children and were shielded from deportation under the Obama-era Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals, the DACA program. This in exchange for the $5.7 billion he has requested for a barrier on the southern border with Mexico. Now, I'm not going to read all of this, but um, I'm reading you this other article that's talking about governments will fall. Now, I'm telling you, something is coming, okay? Now, I'm wondering if uh, President Donald Trump knows something's coming, and maybe they, the government knows, and, you know, and the, but they're trying to get them, the media is trying to get your eyes on what's going on. And see, we're having those earthquakes along the West Coast, which um, could prevent those Mexicans that are illegal coming into the United States. So maybe they're wanting to put that wall up. Uh, Trump and them because to keep those illegals out of our our country because something big is getting ready to happen All right now, but this blood moon this rabbi said super blood moon They he, he said here that um It's going to be a lunar eclipse. that will pass over the Washington DC just as president will reach his the half of one of his term in office the eclipse will be a super blood moon described in Jewish sources as having powerful significance Okay, and it's going to start, I think, tonight and go to tomorrow, to tomorrow sometime. The lunar eclipse will be visible, here it is, entirely from North and South America as well as portions of Western Europe and Northwest Africa on the evening of Sunday, which is tonight, January 20th, and the early morning hours of Monday, January 21st. The evening of the eclipse will be a supermoon when the moon is at its per perigree, the point in its month-long elliptical orbit that brings it closest to Earth. At that time, the moon appears up to 14% bigger than 30% brighter than its apogee, its further point from Earth. Okay? That's what they're saying. On the political care, they're saying the date also marks the half upon Donald Trump presidency coming exactly two years after he was sworn in as the 45th president of the United States. It should be noted that Trump was born on the night of Ju June 14, 1946, Within 15 minutes of a lunar eclipse, a number of days before the state of Israel was established, Trump's lucky sevens did not end there. 
When he was sworn in as president on January 20th, 2017, he was a seven year, 70 years old, seven months and seven days. On the Jewish calendar, the holiday of the Tuba Shop, the 15th day of the Hebrew month of Shabbat, begins at sundown on the same day known as the New Year of the Trees. Tuba Shabbat is one of the four New Year's mentioned in the Mishnah, the Oral Law. And that rabbi, he, he's talked about it. He says, Judgment Express. There will be a marked increase in earthquakes and volcanoes, he's saying, even more than we've seen in the past year. Just as the eclipse is a conflict between the sun and the moon to rule over the heavens, there will be a summer conflict on earth. This will begin a time when governments are in imbalance. Some governments that seem powerful right now will fall and others will rise in their place. And I believe we're about to see them. You know, we're hearing about all this stuff that's going on with the um, the volcanoes now waking up. I mean, we've gone through all this. I'm not going to go through all this right now. Um, you can go listen to it on our prophetic words. I've talked about um, the dead animals, uh, the dead fish, the dead birds. I mean, the blood that's turning red, it's turning black. I mean, what about these weather changes? What about, um, we talked about, um, where is it? I'm not going to read that. I'm just going to read talk. Mysterious anomaly under Africa is weakening, they're saying. And um, th this other article, strange seismic waves that rippled around the world. Okay, they're saying that the pole is shifting. And remember, I gave a prophetic word about it's going to be a cold winter. You know, and I know up north, they've been getting blizzards and it's been really cold up there. Okay, and the wind's blowing here. I know right now here in Florida. All right. Now, I want to read you this um, article. It's, but we're going to talk about Israel in just a moment, Aaron. Um, remember now, I'm just going to briefly talk about this while it's popping up here. Um, I gave prophetic words, if you remember, June 17th of, la of last year, prepare for an increase of larger earthquakes in the United States. Remember that prophetic word I gave, and now we're seeing them starting to pop up. And I believe once this blood moon hits, we're going to see even bigger earthquakes. All right. All right. We talked about shaking the heavens and earth. All right. We've given that scripture before. Hebrews 12, 26 to 28. He said, once more, I'm going to shake the heavens and the earth. All right. So God, and what's not of him is going to go on the wayside. What's of, uh, of the Lord will remain. Okay. And remember, I've shown this picture. President Donald Trump, there are the floodwaters. The desk is there. And on the next scene, the desk is taken away. Remember that dream that I shared with you, this person had, and God gave me an interpretation. And the final part of the dream, we were leaving the field after batting practice. I heard and felt the ground shake. Okay, and then at the bottom, President Trump was wearing one of his Make America Great Again shirt, and he was completely absorbed, and he was walking along. And remember, I told you, this is not a time to walk away from your president. Whether you voted for him or not, okay, He's going to make decisions maybe you don't agree with and I don't agree with. We need to pray, saints, because the decisions you and I make, um, the decisions that President Donald Trump will make, will affect all of us. So we need to pray, not gossip and start protesting with non-believers and with those that are on the, what is it? I get up. Is it the left or right? I get a left, I think. My husband, so I don't get all into that, okay? He knows more about this politics stuff than me. I, I, I don't get into that. I just know what I got to do and that, that I do. All right. All right. So he was wearing one of his shirts. And he said, you got to keep praying for him. Remember? So we have to keep praying for President Donald Trump, whether we like him or not. You know, Christians, I know Christians that are gossiping and, and starting protests. I mean, for what? God put him in office for you and I. I believe to get this gospel out there, not for us to sit around and gossip and murmur and talk and start strife and division. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, there's going to be enough of that. We're going to see chaos soon. It's getting ready to take place. All right. Remember at 6 18, I had a dream vision. And I don't know what you call it, but I started seeing big earthquakes popping up on the map. Okay. So these words God gave me, and then a confirmation from Ditcham. I couldn't believe this. And remember, I told you when these planets line up, they cause earthquakes. All right. Now I don't know much about that. Dutch sense knows a lot of that, and Ditcham talks about it. But he gave a he gave a video, uh, timely earthquake warning, North America. He gave an analysis. He said in June, July, and August, 
It gave three warnings were posted on Twitter based on a specific graph that indicates a high probability of large seismic activity in the next 18 months, he said. Okay, we have reason to believe that this particular graph could apply to North America. Okay, and I said that last year, that the, I mean, that these earthquakes are going to be good. And plus, if you remember, I sent a letter to President Donald Trump. I keep just saying it over and over again because back in June 26th last year, all right, I sent uh, the Trump administration, Mike Pence, the secretary, I sent letters all the time over there. And to, he's got people that are on his prayer council team. I received a call one day from somebody, and I've been sending them letters, all right? And I was warning them of what is coming, all right? And remember I said I woke up 3 a.m. in the morning, the same time um, he, John L. Casey sent a letter to Rick Perry. He said, move away from the West Coast. I gave a warning about that, okay? And we are seeing them happen along the West Coast. In fact... I have given other prophetic words, things that are coming. So I've contacted the International Earthquake and Volcano Protection Center that's right here in Florida. General Casey, we've talked about him before. He's a scientist. Okay, he used to be with NASA headquarters and congressional consultant. He was a White House space program advisor, okay? So um, he's a leading researcher on the science of solar activity cycles and their impacts on climate change. Associated catastrophic geophysical events, earthquakes, tsunamis, volcanic eruptions. He's done books, remember, in 2016. We talked about this why catastrophic earthquakes will soon strike the United States. All right. Now, he's warned about the imminent threat to U.S. energy resources and nuclear facilities that the threat their team of scientists detected from years of accumulated research. Okay. And he said this, and this was, um, to, uh, like I said, back in 2017, he said our estimates of the damage that could strike as soon as tomorrow indicates that many millions of Americans could experience earthquakes so large that whole states and regions of the country could be, be without water and power for weeks or months at a time. Now he was he was given a prophecy and he don't even know it. Okay, he's he's into science. Okay, I'm more into what God's saying to me. All right, okay. And he was going on to say that we're saying that our research demonstrates that multiple big ones are about to sweep across the U.S. between 2017 and 2038. So we're definitely going to see more, okay? And I sent a letter to President Donald Trump. This is one of the very first ones. I asked, why is America not making preparations for safeguarding our country for this new era of geophysical danger that has begun? What are we doing to protect against power and water? And how are we going to feed everyone? You know, with the, the whales that have been dying, the birds, the fish. All right. I said, instead, we're focusing on more jobs, growing our economy, healthier, which is good. President Donald Trump, you're doing a great job. But uh, uh, this shutdown, I know, I believe, is part of what's getting ready to happen, too. Okay. I said, this is one that needs to be spoken national news to warn the people in America. Now, I'm not saying we should cause fear, but we as a nation need to be prepared for what's coming, okay? I'm going to tell you right now, if we don't start looking to God, we are in trouble, definite trouble. You know, you can't trust these other countries. I mean, you can't trust China, you can't trust Russia, Iran. I mean, they're all getting nuclear weapons, all right? Okay, and we have to be... Wise like the sermon is and stuff. We can't be telling our enemies what we're getting ready to do. President Donald Trump said something about a missile program in Alaska. I mean, why do you want to come on and tell people that? China, we got them listening. All right. So we have to be careful what we're doing. Quiet. Keep that to ourselves, you know. Because I really truly we're gonna be having to watch and pray. Stay awake even at night, because I'm telling you, something's coming. And it's going to affect us, this nation, all right? So I said, um, I remember, let remember I told I, um, the White House, I saw this one about women entrepreneurs. They had this video. I said, I'm not a woman entrepreneur. I'm a woman prophetess. God reveals to me the dangers that are upon us in the nation and world.
I'm one of my entrepreneur is a person who organizes and manages any enterprise. I want to be a prophetic voice and organize, manage, and set up preparations, safeguard our nation in this new era of geophysical dangers that is upon us. We as a nation must prepare and get ready for the hard days ahead. If we do not start precautions, now there will be no economy, welfare, prosperity for the American people. And I'm going to tell you right now, we're not paying attention to the signs. We as a nation are not paying attention. I've called the White House. They put me on the comment line. They hang up the phone. That No one pays attention. But you know what? God has a way of reaching us. And when he does it, I'm going to tell you right now, it ain't fun. He has a way of humbling us. All right. He's going to humble America. Yes, I've said it more than once. He's going to humble America and bring judgment to our nation. All right. He's trying to reach our nation. He's trying to reach the world. All right. But nobody's paying attention. And I, I'll tell you right now. It, what's that scripture? My people will humble themselves and pray and seek my face. Turn from their wicked ways. I will heal their land. Well, see, God can't heal America when America is living in willful sin. We're killing millions of babies, okay, allowing same sex marriage, worshiping any God we choose. How can we expect God to bless America? No. He's finally going to say, boom, that's it. All right. Then we're going to talk about this in a minute. Then we've got. We need to pray for Israel. Why are we getting in the middle of trying to separate Israel with the Palestinians? Now, I'm going to talk to you about this. A lady had sent me a thing saying that the peace treaty thing was signed, but 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 I didn't see this. I'm going to read you this article here. White House Israel TV story. This was just done on Friday, I believe. The, well, the 17th. Yeah, is that Friday? No, that might have been Thursday. White House Israel TV story on peace plan not accurate, speculation not helpful. Channel 13 claims Trump proposal calls for Palestinian state 85 to 90 percent of West Bank with most Arab neighborhoods in East Jerusalem as its capital. All right. The Trump administration on Wednesday dismissed as inaccurate an Israel TV report that said its forthcoming peace plan would offer Palestinians a state in most of the West Bank with parts of East Jerusalem as its capital. What are we doing with that? We should not be trying to separate Israel with the Palestinians. Anytime America has tried to do that, something huge has happened. All right. And that is very, very dangerous. All right. It goes on to say here that a Channel 13 report earlier that a senior American official had said Trump's peace proposal would provide for Jerusalem to be divided with Israel maintaining sovereignty in West Jerusalem, parts of East Jerusalem, and the Holy Basin, including the Old City and its immediate environs. However, it added that the Holy Basin area would be jointly run with the Palestinians, Jordan, and possibly other countries. All right, so we're trying to push for that. Okay, now... I put up this art other article here. I'm going to read this to you. All right. There's a video. Uh, um, this is from the um, Israel Today. Let me pull this up. They have a video. Palestinians say violence, not negotiation. See, they don't want to negotiate. It remains primary path to peace is what they're saying. So then we shouldn't be getting involved in that. Israel has believed that by entering into peace talks with the Palestinian in Liberation Organization, the PLO, precursor to today's Palestinian Authority, that the later had ensued violence. Most Israelis now know that they were wrong and that the Palestinian leadership and the various groups that dominate Palestinian society continue to view violence against Israel, Israel as a legitimate means to achieving their objectives. But the international community, and especially the mainstream international press, has inexplicably taken the Palestinian leadership at its word. Because in Arabic, the Palestinian leadership continues to admit freely that practices and will continue to practice violence against Israel, they're saying. So they don't want peace, they want they want them annihilated. They don't want anything they don't want Israel to be around. All right. So we as American uh, we uh, in America should not have anything to do with that. Now if you remember on 918, I sent a letter warning to President Donald Trump, do not separate Israel. And I'm going to read it to you. I said, Dear President Donald Trump, 
America must not separate the country of Israel with the Palestinians. If we do not listen, America will suffer the consequences. Joel 3, 2, I will gather all the nations and bring them down to the valley of Jehoshaphat. Then I will enter into judgment with them there on behalf of my people and my inheritance, Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations, and they have divided up my land. Israel is God's chosen nation. They are separated for a reason. The Jewish people are a holy remnant unto the Lord. Deuteronomy 7, 6, 8. For you are a holy people to the Lord your God. The Lord your God has chosen you to be a people for himself, a special treasure above all the peoples on the face of the earth. The Lord did not set his love on you, nor choose you because you are more in number than any other people, for you are the least of all peoples. But because the Lord loves you and because he would keep the oath which he swore to your fathers, the Lord has brought you out with a mighty hand and redeemed you from the house of bondage from the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. He to God's great warning, a big shaking will take place. First Thessalonians 5, 8. For when they say peace and safety, then sudden destruction comes upon them as labor pains upon a pregnant woman, and they shall not escape. I, prophetess Don O'Brien, is warning you in advance what is coming. America has turned away from God and no longer seeks his face. We, the nation of America, must repent now and turn away from our wickedness, for destruction is coming quickly. Second Chronicles. Chronicles 7.14, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. Receive these words from God's servant. And that's what God gave me. Now, I, I'm, not that it matters. You know, I am Jewish, by the way, for those that don't know. On my mother's side, um, they were Russian Jews. So I am Jewish on my father's side. I have that boldness. I'm Italian. You know, but it doesn't matter whether you're a, a, a Jew or a, what's that the word? I can't think of it. You know, it doesn't matter. God loves you, loves all of us. I just wanted to share that with you. But, um, so anyways, I've been sending these letters to our President Donald Trump telling him what's getting ready to happen, all right? Now, let me, um, bring you this word now. If you remember, we're just, we're just reiterating, we're talking about things we're talking about because things are getting ready to wind down here. Alright? Now if you remember on one eight, I gave a word, my sheep will be scattered. So we're getting ready to see that. You know, I believe that's going to happen uh, a falling way and the son of perdition, it will be revealed. It says that before the day of the Lord. Remember now, I did a word about Governor Jared Brown calls on Trump to address issue on climate change. Well, President Donald Trump said he didn't believe it was a climate change. I agree. It's called God's judgment. God is getting ready to judge America. All right. I give a word. Many of my children are still not following me. Children, are you ready for 2019? Study, show yourself approved before God. All right. These words are all on our YouTube page. You can go over there. Now, I'm going to share this word with you. You know, at first I didn't want to share it. You know, I feel like I'm putting myself out there. Um, I have to. Uh, in fact, it's going to happen in the future, and I, I'm not doing it to shame our family. It, uh, it's to help you, all right? Because we all are going through changes. God is changing you, and He's changing me, all right? But, um, and I know the Holy Spirit spoke this word to me because I heard it out of nowhere. I mean, it just, poof, I mean, I, I wasn't playing on it. It just popped up. And when he, I hear something, I, I ask the Lord, is there something else you want to share it with me? So um, I'm going to share this with you. I heard him say, and he spoke of this to me, and then he spoke some words to the body of Christ. All right. So this is not just for me. It's for all of us. I, I, I want you to know that. All right. God is talking to all of us. And I say this humbly, these words that I have brought to you, you know, I speak it humbly. But he said to me, and I heard it loud, he said, you must cooperate with me. That's what he was saying to me, okay? And this is for all of us, okay, saints, what I'm about to say. Now, on, on Facebook, I put this up there that, you know, the Lord showed me this a few months ago. And um, I remember I read this on a, pro, I was reading it on a prophetic word, and uh, and I, he said, we we need you. And I, I started crying. It was like the Holy Spirit spoke it to me so gently. And that's when I really started realizing even more 
that it's not about you, it's not about me. Saints, God needs you and he needs me. He needs us to cooperate with what he's doing because it's not about us, all right? That's why I said we've got to die to our flesh and what we think we want, feel. You know, just when I thought I was dead, I'm not dead yet. And, you know, none of us are dead yet. You know, we may think we, we've reached that point. No, we haven't. He is changing us. And even late, I'm still out there all the way. I don't, I don't know if I, well, any of us will get there until we, we meet Jesus. We're all changing from glory to glory. You know, and I, I'm going to share this word with you. And after I do, I said to the Lord, I said, God, I know what you're saying to me, but I can't do it. I'm not there yet. Have you ever felt like God's telling you to do something, but you're not there? You can't get yourself to do it. You know what I'm talking about. You do things you shouldn't be doing. You know you're not supposed to do them. and um, But for some reason, you can't get yourself to do it. And sometimes the pain causes you to reach out and do things you shouldn't be doing. Okay, Those that are spiritually in tune with what I'm talking about know exactly where we're where I'm going with this, all right? So I gave this word, you must cooperate me. I heard the Holy Spirit say this to me at 10 or 2 a.m. I heard that yesterday. I didn't have time to speak yesterday. And this is what I wrote. Remember I told you God speaks to the head and then it comes down to the, the body of Christ. The Lord is getting ready to exalt Daniel and me, and I say that humbly, and I do. I say that humbly because God has shown me that um, this vision that he's given me, he's given me back in my 20s. He said, though the vision, Terry, wait for it, it'll surely come. This vision is getting bigger than myself. You know, God will show you things that are coming that seem so big. And now that we're getting near it, I'm like, God, I don't know if I can do what you're asking me to do. I need you to help me. And maybe you're going through that too. And, you know, you feel you're not there yet. And so, um... So I said, God is making Daniel our leader, so he expects, he speaks to me first, then I'm to speak to you, the body of Christ. God corrects me, and then God has a word of correction for you. That is why I told you I need your prayers, because the enemy will attack me, and then I cannot speak to God's children. And that goes for all of us. That's why I said here, that's why you need to pray for your pastors, the president. We need to pray for President Donald Trump. And when we're done, we're going to pray for president. We're going to pray for Israel. We're going to pray for all of us, all right? Vice President Mike Pence, all of the leaders of America, senators, House of Representatives, all the way down to our governors, mayors, and those that are over you and me. We need to pray constantly. Brothers and sisters, we need to keep each other in prayer. We don't need to gossip and talk bad about one another and say, oh, look what they're doing. Look what that, you know, because the same things we judge them for, we do ourselves. All right, and we don't know what it took from them to get to where they're at. So we've got to quit that. That God does not like when we're judging and gossiping and talking, okay, and thinking that we're better. No, we're all sinners saved by God's grace. All right, here's that scripture I've read before: First Timothy two one through three, and this is from the easy to read version. God wants us to pray for everyone. First of all, ask that you pray for all people. Ask God to bless them and give them what they need. And give thanks. You should pray for rulers, verse 2, and for all who have authority. Pray for these leaders so that we can live quiet and peaceable lives, lives full of devotion to God and respect for Him. This is good and pleases God our Savior. All right, now I'm going to share some of this with you. This is what God said to me. And then I'm going to share with you what God said to all of us. Okay, and um, this is what he said to me. He said, I see everything that is going on in your situation, daughter, but you must cooperate with me, I heard him say. I can only do so much. If you choose not to listen and obey me, you are hurting yourself. I will allow you to make mistakes because I, the Lord, love you. I will not force you, daughter, to do my will. I will teach you, daughter, that my way is the best way. See, God's way is the best way. He speaks to all of us. I told you, I'm not any better than you are. I'm in the same boat. God is changing all of us. I see the beginning and the end. I know everything. Trust me, says the Lord. 
The problems you and Daniel are going through right now will be resolved. I heard the Lord say. And he's getting ready to do things in marriages. That was a word I'm not going to share right now. I don't feel I'm going to share it. But I heard him say this. Marriages are brought to be healed. That was a word he gave me the other day as well. Okay. So he's about to resolve some things he was telling me. You both, he was talking to Daniel and I, you both must be willing to cooperate, he said, and obey me, the Lord. If you do not listen to me, then my plans for your life will change. See, you and I can change God's plans. When we don't listen to God, we can change them. Oh, yes, we can. All right. I have big plans for you. You must listen to me and obey, not just hear and know. Obey me, says the Lord. And then he was talking to all of us. He said, this goes for all my children. Many of them do not listen, is what he said. They hear me, but do not obey my precepts. The reason I chose you and Daniel is because you not only listen to me, you obey me. You obey. And remember, I gave that word on 8 and 9, stop doing your own will and do my will, says the Lord. On 12, 23, 18, he said, many of my children are still not following me. He said, hard times are coming. Very hard. This is for all of us, okay? I'm talking to all of the saints. That beginning, he was talking to me, but now he's talking to all of us. Hard times are coming. Very hard. It's time you put foolish things aside. Come away and seek me, says the Lord. The world has nothing to offer you but hurt and pain. Realize that. Don't you see what is happening in the world? Children, I have made you aware. Many of my children are still asleep and not yet awake. I, the Lord, am about to wake them up. And remember, I gave that word on 12, 27, 17. Tell my people I'm about to wake them up. Romans 13, 11 through 13. To live, this is from the translation Bible, living in the light. To live like this is all the more urgent for time is running out and you know it is strategic hour in human history. It's time for us to wake up for our full salvation, for our full salvation is nearer now than when we first believed. Night's darkness is dissolving and a new destiny, a new day of destiny dawns. So we must once and for all strip away what is done in the shadows of darkness, moving it like filthy cloths, clothes. And once and for all, we clothe ourselves with the radiance of light as our weapon. Verse 13. We must live honorably, surrounded by the light of the new day, not in drunkenness or drunkenness and debauchery, not promiscuity and sensuality, not being argumentative or jealous of others. That's Romans 13, 11 through 13. He said, there is coming a great famine to the United States of America. And I've said that back in uh, May. I've told you of this earlier. Sons and daughters, you will do greater miracles than what I, the Lord, did during my time. John 14, 12 through 14. This is the easier version. I can assure you that whoever believes in me will do the same things I've done, and they will do even greater things than I've done, because I'm going to the Father, and if you ask for anything in my name, I will do it for you. Then the Father's glory will be shown through the Son. If you ask me for anything in my name, I will do it. Obey me, children. With all your heart, I need you. All right? He needs you and I. The harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. See, it's not about us and what we want. Lord, I help ask you to crucify our flesh and help us to get our eyes fixed upon you and know that it's about you and what you're wanting to do in these last days. Matthew 9, 35-38. This is from the English Standard Version. The harvest is plentiful, the labors are few. And Jesus went throughout the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom and healing every disease and every affliction. Verse 36, when he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. Verse 37, then he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the labors are few. Therefore, pray earnestly to the Lord of the harvest and send out laborers into his harvest. It's time, my children. To get in line with what I, the Lord, am about to do. A great shaking is coming to the United States. Get ready, says the Lord. That time is almost here. 
And that's what he said. Hebrews 12, 26 through 28, I've read this before, whose voice then shook the earth, but now he's promising yet once more, I shake not only the earth, but also heaven. Now this, yet once more, indicates the removal of those things that are being shaken, as of things that are made, that the things which cannot be shaken may remain. Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom which cannot be shaken, let us have grace by which we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. All right. I told you, I just gave a word about my sheep will be scattered. And that's what's going to happen. Because you've been sitting in these churches where you're listening to wolves. Wolves in sheep's clothing. If you're in one of those churches, you need to get out. You need to start hearing the word, the true word of God. Because there's a lot of false doctrine being preached in those churches. Remember on January 1st of 2018, everyone had this blessing message. And I said, God, you're not saying nothing to me. And this is what he said. Remember, my winnowing fork is in my hand. I'm getting ready to clear my threshing fork. And that means clear. Threshing fork means shake. And remember the baby shaking syndrome? He's going to go like this. He says he's going to do it to the world and to the church. All right? I, I mean, I never heard of that before until I looked it up. Uh, I, saw, I saw a baby being shaken that was asleep. Then I looked up baby being shaken. I got this. It's called baby shaken baby syndrome. It's called the shaken impact syndrome. And that's what he said it's going to do to the church and to the world. So we're getting ready to see it. All right. And remember, I told you just a little ago about that dream. They heard and felt the ground shake. So we, we definitely need to keep in prayer because I'm telling you, something is getting ready to happen. Let's, um, in a minute, we're going to pray for the President Trump. We're going to pray for America. We're going to pray for our economy, Israel, and our enemies. I want to read you America the Great. Um, I've read this poem before. I want to read it to you. America, America, we are saddened with dismay. This once strong nation has forgotten God and no longer prays. We become a nation of disgrace that stands for everything ungodly to the human race. How can we expect to remain strong when God is no longer our head, but is gone? We have pushed his spirit out, for he will not struggle with man, make no doubt. We have neglected his way and instead ignore what he does say. America thinks it knows more. We were once rich, but now we are poor. America stand, stands in judgment this day. God will not tolerate the sins of this nation, oh, what made. America, the red, white, and blue, will be humbled by our God. Watch and see what he will do. People laugh, scoff, and think this is a game. You will not listen. It is a shame. God will now humble America the Great. This country that once stood strong has become our worst fate. Ugh. Journal 820. Like the nations of the Lord destroyed before you, so you'll be destroyed for not obeying the Lord your God. It's important, saints. It's important that we get back to God and we start seeking Him. It's important. We're about to see things happen. You know, if you feel led to help us in this ministry, we have three partners. God bless you for your giving. If we're your church and you feel led to partner with us, you can go on our website, www.dawnsheartfeltcorner.org. You'll see my blonde hair. But there are different places you can partner. You can also send a gift to heartfeltcorner10 at gmail.com. That is our PayPal. If you'd like to send a gift, or you can send it in the mail at Dawn's Heartfelt Corner, P.O. Box 161273, Altamont Springs, Florida, 32716. I will list all the information on there. And, and if you'd like a receipt, if you have a large donation, just let us know and we'll send it out to you. Jesus gets all the glory. Um, in a minute, we're going to pray, but I want to read this um, letter from um, Byron Searley. He just gave this word on uh, yesterday, January 19th. You have been warned, he said. Jeremiah 42, 21 through 22. And now I have this day declared to you, but you have not obeyed the voice of the Lord your God, nor anything for the which, for that which he has sent me unto you. And now therefore now know certainly that you shall die by the sword, by the famine and the pestilence in the place what, whither you desire to go and to sojourn. Here's this transcript. My son, speak now to those who are lukewarm in the church. Declare unto them that the day of the Lord is at hand. Declare unto them to repent this day of all the sins of our idolatry and the whoredoms they have committed. I say unto you that these stiff-necked people think they can run and hide from my judgments. There are blind sheep being led by blind shepherds thinking they are righteous. But I say unto them, the door is closing. 
I see no repentance, only pride. My son, these people ignore my prophets and mock and scoff the words of warning I send out. They will ignore the sign in the heavens this week as a warning of destruction coming to this land. But instead, see my blood moon as just another event. And that's true. There are people, they're going out to see this. But I'm telling you, these earthquakes, I truly believe, are going to get bigger. We're getting ready to see something huge take place in our nation. How many of my shepherds will even say anything about it other than it's cool? Be sure to watch it. I say, this is those ignorant and blind people. You have been warned, he said. Thus saith the Lord God of heaven's armies, your land will be made desolate in one hour. Your lights will go out and the darkness you love will be your God. My fire will burn, 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 and nothing will left but ashes. You say you worship me. You say you trust me. You say you have faith in me. I say you're a liar and many will perish because they have trusted me. Man, not me. My son, you can scream repent until you are blue in the face. This lukewarm church will reply, repent of what? They are blind, deaf, and dumb, and think they are in need of nothing. We become complacent. That's what's happened. We, the church, have become complacent. I'm going to tell you right now, God is getting ready to shake the boat. All right? He's getting ready to shake the boat. Right? They have all the pleasure of this wall and all the pride to go with it. Only by my shaking this church awake will they move in the right direction. I will shake them so violently that they will know it is I. All right. And I told them, shaking baby syndrome, it's going to get right up. And they will seek out my remnant who I prepared for this day and hour. My son, I love my people. I want none to perish. So I'm holding back, but not for much longer as prophecy must be fulfilled. I'm coming soon to declare the day. To declare the day, stand in my word and prayer. Amen, Messiah Jesus. I'm telling you, it's coming. We're getting ready to see a huge shaking. Let's pray, saints. We don't need to worry. God is in control. Let's pray. All right. Father, we just come together in agreement, Lord. Father, we lift up President Donald Trump, Lord. Father, we pray for him, Lord, that he'll make the right decisions in our nation, Lord. All we can do is pray. You've given us... Um, Direction, Lord, and have told us to, to pray for those that are in authority, Lord. And our president is over us, so we lift him up and we pray for him, Lord God. I pray that all the letters that I've sent as warnings and others as well, Lord, that they would reach the Trump administration, that somebody would read them and pay attention, Lord. We pray for Mike, uh, Vice President Mike Pence, Lord, also, Lord, that um, I've been sending letters to the secretary, Lord, that they'll be reached. Lord, we pray your will would be established, Lord, not our will, but your will, Lord. We're believing that, Lord. Father, we pray for our, the nation of America that you'd protect the economy, Lord, with that shutdown and the border situation, everything that's going on, and that chaos is going to take place, Lord. We ask that your hand be upon our nation, Lord. Most of all, we pray for Israel, Lord. Help. Uh, forgive us, Lord, for trying to separate Israel with the Palestinians, Lord. I ask that you protect Israel. Keep them safe from the Palestinians, from Hamas, and for all those nations that will try to come against them, Lord God. We plow the blood over them right now in Jesus' name. Put a hedge of protection around your people, Lord. Protect them, I pray in Jesus' name. Protect America, Lord. Keep your hand upon America, Lord. Protect us from our enemies, Russia, China, Iran, all these countries that are getting a new weapon, Lord. I pray, oh God, keep us safe, Lord. We thank you for the many blessings you have blessed our nation with food and water and shelter, all those things that we take for granted. Forgive us, oh God. Lord, help us have thankful hearts and to praise you, Father, no matter what is going on. Lord, we know that things are getting ready to take place and we're going to see things happen. I even believe with this blood moon, Lord God. But Father, we're not going to worry. I come against that spirit of worry. I come against that spirit of fear, Lord. Our hope and our trust is in you, Lord. I believe the greater days are ahead of us, Lord. We shall do greater miracles, you said, if we but believe. Lord, I believe. We, the children, the house of God, the Look to you. We believe, Lord. We believe for miracles. We believe that this is the hour, Lord. The doors will shall be open, Lord. Greater things, bigger things. There are those that are waiting, Father, for you to open doors, Lord. I believe, Lord, the time is now, Lord. That vision that you placed in my heart and in the lives of your people Lord, is, is coming to pass, Lord, right now in Jesus' name. We believe that, Lord. We thank you for what you're about to do. And for those, Lord, that are waiting and maybe that vision won't come today, Lord, Help them to keep waiting. Strengthen them. Encourage their hearts, Lord, to continue to wait, Father, because you will bring it to pass. 
your timing, Lord. It's not our timing, Lord. Teach us to wait patiently, to trust you, Lord, even in the process while we're going through it, Lord. I pray today in Jesus' name. And I want to say, if you are listening to me and you don't know Christ, today is your day. Not tomorrow. You don't know what's going to happen. I don't know what's going to happen. If you're listening and you do not know Jesus Christ of Nazareth, you never made Jesus Lord of your life, today's your day. All right? He's, he loves you enough to warn you. Don't turn this station off because you think, well, you don't need Christ. Oh, and he's just a crutch. No. He's for all of us. We all need Lord. I'm going to tell you right now because there's not going to be people biting you. Say, oh, it's going to be okay. No. We're going to have to go to God individually. All right? People are going to be so wrapped up in their own lives, they're not going to have time to hear what you have to say, all right? So you are going to have to give your heart and life to Christ. You're going to have to call upon the name of the Lord to come help you and rescue you, all right? If you do not know Jesus Christ in Nazareth, I want to pray with you, all right? I want you to mean this prayer. I want you to bow your head and just repeat a prayer with me. Just mean it in your heart. God hears you. All right. Maybe you're going through life and you're trying to make decisions, do this and do that. It's not working out. Well, it's not going to work out. I'm going to tell you right now until you put Jesus number one in your life. And that's the great thing about God. When Jesus is number one, everything comes together. It's when you're kicking Jesus out, everything falls apart. So if you don't know Christ, I want to pray with you. Bow your head with me. Just repeat this prayer and say, dear Jesus, I am a sinner. Forgive me of my sins. Cleanse me and wash me in your blood. Come into my heart, Jesus, and save me. I want to know you like this dawn is talking about. Make yourself known to me, Lord. I want to know you today. In Jesus' name, amen. If you just go to God, he hears you. You don't have to sound eloquent. Just come as you are. Everyone that calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. That's, God is amazing. I said, God, how are you going to use me? He takes the weak things of the world to confound the wise. We serve an awesome God. He is so awesome. I mean, all right, I can talk and talk and talk about God. I think that's everything I wanted to say. You know, I just wanted to make that word known to you because I'm telling you, saints, we're on the verge of something happening. And I don't know when I'll do another live video. I'll see you soon. I don't know where I'll be. This is temporary. Daniel, I've been waiting here. We're like, God wins, God wins. We're ready to get out. His time is not ours, though. I'm going to tell you right now, every time I think it's time, he makes us wait even longer and longer. Was it precept upon precept? But I mean, I heard it yesterday. I was like, wow. I know we're getting ready. And now the super blue moon. And we're seeing the earthquakes increase. Volcanoes decrease. I mean, so things are happening. It's happening. But sometimes, you know, you and I want to happen faster. You know, God takes his time. And what happens when he don't move on our time schedule? We do it ourselves. And when we do it ourselves, we bring trouble upon ourselves. So we need to learn to wait. Lord, teach us to wait. Teach us how to wait. I pray in Jesus' name. You know, I tell you, I go to the grocery store. Every time we go, we got to wait. I said, see, we got to wait because we're in line. We got to wait. God's still teaching me how to wait. You think after 20 something years, I know how to wait? No, I can't. I don't want to wait, but I'm ready to go. But God wants us to wait. He told me before, enjoy this time. You're going to be very busy. Now, I don't know exactly what I'll be doing, but I'm going to be very busy. Now, even if it's a short period, maybe you feel like, you know, at times I felt the way you've wasted your time. You know, you're just sitting there, you're waiting, you're like, God, when, God, when, you know. You know, I've done all these prophetic words, I've done all these teachings and writing, and I'm like, God, I don't see you moving, you know. But you want to know something? If, if that little bit of time, remember, God has a purpose. You know, so if you're used for just a little point of time, but you did God's will, you did the most important thing, because when you stand before the Lord, He's going to ask you, what did you do? He's going to say, well done, my good and faithful servant. Now, if you didn't do God's will, he's going to say, away from me, I never knew you. So I would rather be used, if it's what, six months, a year, two years, than to worry about you being used 20 years. That's not important because you could be doing all that in vain. It's important that we do God's will in these last days. I'm serious saying it's important that we walk in God's way. All right, I want you to know we love you. We're praying for you. Please keep us in this in your prayers. You know, we're still going through it. You know, God, remember that one video I did about the finishing touches. But, you know, he's God's never done. He's changing you and I from glory to glory. 
All right, we'll talk soon. But you know, we love you and we appreciate. Until we meet again, this is Prophetess Dawn O'Brien, Sermon of the Lord with Dawn's Heartfall Corner. God bless you. Have a safe um, Sunday week if I don't talk to you live. I, all right, I, I don't know where when I'm going to do another. It's all in the Lord's hands. I'll talk to you soon. God bless you.